On the corner with yours truly incognito. And DJ Misses. DJ Misses. What's up? Real deal legend in the studio. Mm-hmm. Not just an ATL, too. Come on now, young draw. Yeah. Yes, Clean in there, bitch. <laughs> What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, Draw? How you feeling today? Man, I'm feeling good, man. How about yourself? What's up with you? I'm feeling good. So before we even get, what's keeping Young Draw going? What's keeping you going? Oh man, my children. Fans love, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My team, you know what I mean? And most of all, God. Yeah, no, for <laughs> it's, real. It's, it's yeah, Drogo gonna say that. He's like, we having God. Uh, yeah. no. We start talking about God before getting to moving out the window. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Man, Dro, what was your very first show ever? Uh, uh, my very first show ever, man, I didn't even have no ID. Uh, I think Raheem got me this show in Wisconsin. Tony Neal gave me my first show, man. What? Shout out Tony Neal. When, um, when, he, when, it, when it, we got all the way to the airport, and, um, and he, Raheem was like, you got some ID? And I was like, yeah, I got some ID. And when I pulled the ID out, it was my uh, my housing authority, uh, housing authority ID from Kimberly Court. <laughs> he was like, that ain't ID. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we had to turn around. We had to wait a couple down a day or two. Then I got my ID, man. I flew to Wisconsin, man. I had my first show. It was for the single, Yes Sir. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> That's fire. So you've been on your run lately, and you have been very vocal about what you have been through in your life from substance mm-hmm. abuse and things like that. But uh-huh. how do you deal with things mentally after the fact? Like, how have you protected your peace once you started healing? Um, Well, I, I had to I had to change my number, man, and I had to stop hanging out with a lot of the people that I love, you know, and I love them to this day. It's just where I was going, I couldn't stay where I was at. You know what I'm saying? So once I changed my number, I stopped going out. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to be in a strip club all the time or at a club or something. So I stopped going out unless I was getting paid, of course. Right. Um, and after I did that, once I changed my surroundings, you know what I mean? It, my, my partner always told me if nothing don't change, then change everything around you. You know what I mean? So that's what I did. Definitely. So yeah. right now with still keeping your space with people, but what is some other advice that you can give to people that are trying to transition from that lifestyle, but they don't know where to start. They don't, they don't have the certain type of guidance that they feel like they need. What's some advice that you have for those people? I don't know. I think, I think you gotta just, if, if I would do them, I would see what's important to me. You know what I'm saying? What to you, mm-hmm. you feel what I'm saying? Like, if if something's important to you, then make room for what it take to keep it. I want to. I, I try to have a life that you don't have to take a vacation from. You know what mm. I'm saying? That's 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 the way I look at it. I gotta start thinking more things like that. I need to live my life like I'm already. It's already a vacation. I don't want to have to take a break from it. Don't, don't, I don't want to take a break from this. I love it. Yeah. Man, I had to put my Falcons hat on today. I'm trying to ride a red, black, and white shit. <laughs> <Now, my idea. laughs> <laughs> what is Buddy Bird going to do this season, Drew? Man, I've been smiling lately, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't smiled this hard in football season in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, can, we can let uh, Kirk Cousins come over there through deal with you. Yeah, <laughs> man. You ride down deal with me, man. That's her ski. That's what's up. So new music from from you coming soon. Yeah, yeah. What can um, we expect from your project? Um, man, I got it's I got so much stuff going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, of course we just dropped this with um Kurt. Of course, and um we um gathering our minds and we want to um shoot the video here. I was thinking that yeah, we should go on Simpson Road and and take Kurt Franklin, bring Kurt to Simpson Road. You know what I'm saying in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking like in front of the liquor store with the bleachers up there, put the choir right there. Come on, Joe. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? Brain Kirk, you know what I'm saying? The Simpson. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that what we're working on with that. You know, Tip Tip and I have a, a joint project coming out mm-hmm. called Tip and Dro. Okay. Eagle Drip. You know what I'm saying? Dro and Tip, Eagle Drip. You know what I mean? So that's coming out. Um, we we have enough music for a good, a very solid album. And uh, the PSC got the um, album on the way mm-hmm. with DJ Drama. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Still in the street. And I have a project on the way that's going to probably drop around my birthday with uh, Zay Tovin, man. One of the Drose! Best- <laughs> but look, it's in my phone just like that. Drose, <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. We got one called Ten P Hot on the way, man. Make sure y'all bring y'all blue cheese. It's going to be real fire. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
it should be out around our birthday, man. And I got a lot of stuff coming out, man. It's, it's going on. And we shoot movies too, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. It's on the way, bro. I, working. The screen, bro. I, I just came from shooting today. Uh, tip got a movie called Situationships. Um, and I'm in that movie. I'm in the Apartments movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm narrating um, like Tip is with the voiceover. Uh, Tip is Departments and I'm Backstreet. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Do you have any other dreams that you want to accomplish? Yes, man. I want to I want a diversion center, man, for I want to open up a diversion center. I want a place where people can go that's trying to get their life together. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You could be coming out of jail or you can, you know, you can walk in off the street. You know what I mean? I want to be able to provide a safe space for recovering addicts. Mm. If you just got out of jail and you're trying to get it straight, um, uh, I want to be able to have a place there for wrongfully evicted people that have been wrongfully evicted. We got this thing called Sun to where we speak up now for wrongfully evicted people. We're trying to keep families in their homes and mm. also, you know what I'm saying, you know, keep people off the street. Love that. Mm-hmm. Young Dro posted on the corner with Incognito and DJ Mrs. Mm-hmm. Dro, what what was your very first rap you wrote? <laughs> you remember that? How would you grade yourself? Uh, let me see the very first rap I wrote. You know, the very first rap I wrote sounded like um, Tupac on I Gotta Get Mine with MC Bree. And it was so close to it. My cousin heard it and was like, bro, you sound like Tupac. You need to go back and do that again. <laughs> So I, it, yeah, it was it was. I think when I heard him rapping, I kind of like wrote down with the same tone, different words. Okay, you know what I'm saying. I kept the same tone pitch he had, and then he had and just said different words. I remember it though. It was it was pretty cool rap. What what rap are you most proud of that you have written? It have to be this one. We thank God because I was vulnerable and. It took it took a lot in me to, to say that, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I had did like a thousand interviews, and everybody was like, "What was your breaking point?" And I just was beating around. But to say that was, you know what I mean? Because people look at you different, you know what I mean? Every, now, now every time I see somebody, they be looking at me like, "You okay?" I be like, "Yeah." Every time I you look, you look good. I be like, "Okay." <laughs> All right now. But, you know, it, but I love the love though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, but it just take it takes strength to to say what broke you and, and that you're putting yourself back together, you know what I mean, with the grace of God. It, it, yeah. Definitely. Want to yeah. give you your flowers for that sure for sure is. because yeah. that's that's like a therapy session for real. Is, like, And is. was it difficult for you to actually, how many times did you have to go in the studio and be like take a break or, or did you just go in and just straight? Oh, yeah. Um, what you talking about with that particular song? Yeah, with that particular oh, song. Oh, uh, well, man, Chip called me one day and was like, I got this Sunday service record, and I think you should just start to tell your story. He didn't know I was going to say that. The real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, once I did, you know what I'm saying, get, hear the song, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. So one day I was at the studio, and I heard the song playing, and Tip was in the, in the room, and he was like, you got your verse? I was like, yeah. I was like, and then the choir came, mm-hmm. and then he was like, oh, yeah, and Kirk, coming he on the way i'm like kirk on the way <laughs> like, Hold on. Like, oh, this crazy. i was like this is crazy and i was like what better time to because he just said tell your story he didn't know in details of what i was gonna say and it just was like it was it was it was it was mind-blowing you know what i mean uh, uh kirk was very exciting and he was just like drawing we had he had pulled me over like we was in a huddle at a game he was like man come talk to me tell me <laughs> What's going on? He said, right. this happened for I'm like, yeah. And, he, you know, and, and he was like, man, big deal. He was like, Tip, man, what you got to wear? Tip was like, man, he speaking his truth. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Kurt felt like that uncle that we always right. had. <laughs> man, you know, you know, you know, bro, funny, man. He really funny. Like, and he, he made the space even safer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And for me to, like, Sunday service, it was like 20 of them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Singing live. They was playing live. We did all that. All that was right there. Like nobody sent nobody nothing on. We did that in one walk, like together. So to to be that open in front of them, I, I really felt good about that, man. And I want to mm-hmm. thank them right now. I never got a chance to thank Sunday Service. I really want to thank them for making me feel safe and Kirk 
and Tip for making me feel safe enough to tell a story that some of us don't get a chance to tell. They mm-hmm. they end up dying. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, so, you still got hits that stick like grits, though. Oh, okay, that's, now? that's crazy. You, you still tear the club up. Yeah, yeah. And one of my favorites to surprise people with is shoulder lean. Yeah. Right? So, tell us about that process of shoulder lean. What was the studio session like? We all remember the music video. <laughs> man, the, <laughs> it, was, it was crazy because, uh, man, you had Fable on them out. Um, uh, lean with it, rock with it was mm-hmm. out. You know what I'm saying? And parlayed on with everyone on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, pool palette was going crazy. Everybody was dancing, you know, <laughs> Soldier Boy, you know what I mean? Everything was going on. Mm-hmm. And Chip was like, man, I want to do something that, you know what I'm saying, that, that the young people can dance. I was mm-hmm. like, you know, we can't dance. But I don't know how to <laughs> dance, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, we can't dance, right? And you know what I'm saying? And, and plus, we be liking to put it on. We like to have it on. So, right. you know what I mean? I was like, just do something that's geared towards cool people. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and it, it, it it's just, just show, just show the lean. Yeah. You know, you can, you can have your drink in your hand, you know, you got to, you got to switch your shirt out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you You're can, just chilling. You can still have your composure shoulder lean. Right. You feel me? You can show the lean with a cup in your hand. You know what I'm right. saying? So I felt like that was the coolest thing that we could do. Yeah. And then I, and when once I, once I heard the hook, I was like, now I can just snap. Like I can release what I've been thinking, mm-hmm. you know. You know what I'm saying? As far as getting fresh, I, I picture myself rapping in a room with people and then making everybody spread out and look at my outfit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it was a moment for me. I love that. Yeah, Dro take that fashion real serious. Nah, for real. <laughs> How much Ed Ralph Lauren you got in your closet? Now I, I'm giving a lot of it away. For real? Yeah, because my, I, you know, I got five. You know, my dad got like 13 kids, so, mm-hmm. and I got so many nephews and right and nieces, and you know what I'm saying. And over the years, you know, if if some if I'm around somebody, I'll give away a lot of it. I, I remember just giving my dad stuff that he didn't even want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rest in peace, pops. You know what I'm saying? Over the years, man, it just I just been giving it away. You know what I'm saying? Just because, I don't know, I get it again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dro put me on to that ragu. He said, that's that Ralph and that Gucci. Go together. on. <laughs> oh, man, you remember that? He, uh, man, ragu, they, they don't know the lingo. They don't know the, the lingo. lingo. crazy, man. Ragu, man, you feel me? Man, come That's to- soft. That real soft. Right. Yeah. Hey, man, <laughs> you feel me? How you be coming up with this, though, Dro? I mean, you know, not not having something, you know what I mean? It, it gives you a, a thirst for something better you know what i'm saying like we we like us us being poor and not having food it made me rap about what color the car was was poking beans or you feel what i'm saying mm. this, this right here look like kiwi stuff that we was missing i kind of put back into my life through my music that's so dope yeah. what's a lesson that you've learned lately a lesson that i've learned lately um <sighs> The e- my my ego, man. Um, you have to you have to you have to trade in your ego if you want if you want to move forward. Like if you want to be if you want to go and take reach big heights in life, you have to remove your ego mm-hmm. and humility. You know what I mean. You have to think about other people. You know what I mean. Community service, so to speak. You know what I'm saying. Like. If if it ain't if you're not connected to the community and what you can do to help somebody, you know what I'm saying, and and you have to move your ego to do that, you know, because mm-hmm. with ego you think it's all about you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. That's so true. that's what I've learned to, you know, to you know study humility and remove the ego. Mm-hmm. So I usually ask artists if they could go back in time with some advice that they have for themselves. But mm-hmm. if you could have a out of body experience and talk to yourself now. What's some advice that you have for Dro? You know how people say, I wouldn't change nothing. Mm-hmm. If I if I could change something, if I could have some advice for myself, I would I would totally disregard drugs. Mm-hmm. Because it tears up families. Yeah. It it go it gets in the home and it destroys a family. I'm talking about totally destroys it. And family is everything. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know how to have be um, in a family, then you don't know how to be friends with nobody. So that means you just becoming a terrible person. 
You know what I mean? And if, if your life is centered around drugs, it just eats away at eats away at your family, eats away at your friends, eats away at you, and eventually takes your life. So I would tell myself, don't do drugs. For sure. Young Dro is posting on the corner with yours truly incognito and DJ Mrs. He aging backwards like a fool, too. Hey, no, for real. <laughs> Man, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Uh, superpower. Mm. Uh, it's, it might sound crazy. I would want to see how I'm going to die. Like you want to tra- time travel? Yeah, I want. I would want to see like what, if, how it how it would happen. Like what what would that look like? You know what I mean? And then I'll start living different. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all know what? I don't know what y'all got going on. Hey, but eat that hamburger. But I don't see some. Like, I don't see some stuff. I've seen like, something. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, now you got a lot of features out here. So, what do you think? What was one of your most favorite features that you've done? Oh, my favorite feature. Hmm. Hmm. Man, I can't say it. It didn't. I don't even think it came out. But he locked up right now. See, that be the. See, I be thinking all the dude best stuff. We ain't even locked, getting it. Dude locked up right now, and it's not a good look. But okay. that's one of my my favorite feature was with R. Kelly. Whoa, oh, damn! Yeah. We ain't never got that. Never got it. And you know we're Capricorn, so he was. You know, what I'm saying around that time, I think O.J. the Juice Man did one with him called Superman, something like that. And then he, while he was here, he just got one for me. And I always had it, you know what I'm saying? But it never came out. Damn. So you have a copy of it, though? Yes. Oh, man, I want to hear that. I, I ain't going to lie. One of my favorite remakes, it got to be Ain't I. Oh, man, Ain't I is crazy. It got to be Ain't I. Man, it's, it's, I've been receiving so much love for just records that we did back then. And I ain't going to say music back then is better than now, but it it kind of, it kind of lasts long, you know what I'm saying? It was an energy one. It lasts long. It's able to withstand the test of time, and I perform it today like it just dropped. Cause that, that's what it feel like. Still, yeah. when you play it, every yeah. time I watch them perform, when I'm in that thing, like yo, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yo. So, how do you feel about the current state of hip hop music right now? Cause it has changed a lot, and I don't really feel like it's a lot of hits that's gonna stick around for ten plus years. So, how do you feel? I, I, I you know what. I love it, and I love it for what it is. The reason why I do love it is because it's it's providing, it's providing a way for people like me to feed their family. Mm-hmm. But we're forgetting about the craft. I the think art. a little bit the mm-hmm. art of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I'm at a show and I'm performing, I like I could stop the beat and, you know, still kick rhymes and you know what I'm saying. It, it, you can feel it. It's like a shock. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if people like that still do it today. You know what I'm saying? Like real, real big on their craft. I think that, you know, right now, it's, I love it though. You know what I'm saying? It just don't seem like it has longevity to it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, you know what I mean? Like microwave food. <laughs> you yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to hurry up and eat that. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no reheat. You know, ain't no reheat. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like music back in the day, it's like soul food, like, mm-hmm. like good and mob stuff. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that can feed you and good for the soul. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely with that record with you and Tip and Kurt Franklin. That's, you did, that's you know good soul food. Soul good food. soul food. Mm-hmm. Man, I got some rapid fire questions for you, Dro. Since we're talking about Tilt, what is like your favorite Tilt verse that he that he's put out there in the world? If you make you feel better, picture me over and done with. Come with all the gossip you can come with. Small thing to a giant. I can overcome this. Jail out and done this. Rapping just having fun with. Uh, motivation. Motivation. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, what was that's your awesome. easiest hit that you recorded? The easiest one? FDB. For that B. It was like, uh, <laughs> it was under, it was under. Like when we went to listen to it, it was like, it was the last one I played. Really? And I just was like, I'll just play this. And then when I played it at Clark, everybody lost their mind. I was like, well, put it at the top. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a hit you feel like you missed out on? Ah, man, you it's it's something I missed out on that I've never said before. Um, 
man, Future called me when he first came out. You know what I'm saying? And he asked me to get on. All I wanted is some money. All I, and I just could not find my swag for nothing in the world. And I felt so bad, bro. You feel me? Because I wasn't used to auto-tune. Mm. And Future was just, Future sounded like a angel on the track. I'm like, <laughs> I can't get with this. I, I can't, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I thought that, I thought you at that point, I thought I wasn't good enough to get on it and bless it the way, you know, he thought I probably would have done it. But I, I, I ended up not getting on it because I was, I you couldn't felt, catch it. I like, couldn't catch my, I couldn't catch it, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I regret not getting on all I wanted some money because actually it was a groundbreaker for him. Mm. Yeah. At what point in this industry did you, did your life change where you was like, oh, I made it? Oh, um, I was at the 12, I was at the 12 at the top floor. Um, me and Tip had bought, um, that we bought that condo from Key Sweat, man. You know what I mean? And we, we was living at the top floor and I think the music, uh, I think I was, I think I had like six songs on the radio, Ballin', Remix, the Keisha Cole, mm -hmm. Ain't I, Shoulder Lean, um, it was a lot of, it was a old oh, blood remix with game. All of that was on the radio. And my lawyer called me downstairs and she asked, because I, I have anxiety real bad. She was like, you got your medicine? And I'm like, yeah, why? She was like, come downstairs. I went downstairs and I had a check down there for like, like 900. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, ain't no more food stamps. <laughs> 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 On the rack, I man. Come on, man. Come and that one, that one, we saw the road go escalate, bro. On them yeah, thirties, yeah. We, that, <laughs> Troy, I, we, we was on foes when you dropped thirties, bro. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I was the first one on the street with them thirty boys, man. Like they hadn't even cleared. Like I bought the rim first. They hadn't need. They hadn't even cleared the tire. Yo. They were like, nah, the tie ain't ready for that. I was like, why? They was like, it ain't out yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that was crazy. That's mm -hmm. tight. So we definitely thank you for coming. We want to give you your flowers for persevering through all the struggle, mm -hmm. all the pain. Thank you for not giving up on yourself. Mm -hmm. And thank you for constantly pushing and going and not mm -hmm. giving up on this dream, honey. Mm -hmm. yes. We appreciate you for that. Thank, thank you, you for still choosing you. And yeah. thank you for living for us. We oh, appreciate man, that. That's dope, man. Mm -hmm. Dro, if you could act in one of your favorite movies, what would it be? It'd have to be clumps. Like the clumps. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it'd have, it have to be another professor. <laughs> All right. We know you from Bank here, bro. If uh -huh. you had a second home in the U.S., what 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 city is your second home? Uh, New York, of course. For real. I love New York, dog. I'm talking about like the buildings, the culture, the mafia stuff up there. Like I was just in front of Sparks Restaurant where Paul Castellano got killed, man, and I was like. Oh, I'm up here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just, uh, I look at all the old gang. Like, I love, I love the 80s. I love, I love Money Making Mitch. I love the paid in full mm -hmm. era. I love New York, like, with a passion. You feel what I'm saying? I was just up there. We just was up there uh, a, week, a week ago, man, and I was just walking around. You know what I'm saying? No security. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I, I, I love it. I love that culture. I love the tall buildings.